Hi, this is Kelsey Fikowski for APGov, and in this video we're going to be looking at the role of the media, certainly a major, major linkage institution, and sometimes also referred to as the fourth branch of government. So when we're talking about linkage institutions, remember that this is going to be connecting people with the policy agenda and the policy makers. So anything that involves when we're talking about the mass media from radio, newspapers, magazines, television, internet, um, any way of popular communication, that's what's being referred to as the mass media. And of course, today we're dealing with high tech policy, uh, politics where you have a variety of social media outlets where these policymakers are trying to connect to their constituents. So now people who are running for sometimes president or local office or just for Congress are announcing their candidacy not to a newspaper, not in front of people, but through social media. Oftentimes this happens on Facebook and Twitter and so forth. So some of the major functions here, as you would imagine, entertainment, news reports, and certainly the watchdog, right? They are always watching the government and they're providing additional checks and holding accountability to the executive office, to the uh, Congress, um, and etc. Um, they're also serving as a role as the goalkeeper, right? Sometimes they let stories in and sometimes they're not going to cover stories. So they are very important in terms of what stories they cover and which stories they don't cover. They also serve as a role as the scorekeeper. Certainly sometimes when there's a back and forth between two politicians or parties, they are keeping score as to who's quote unquote winning. So think about the government shutdown. Was President Trump winning or was the uh, or the Democrats in particular Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer uh, were they winning and so it's this informal role that they have another important uh, aspect that they have and this is why I bolded it is agenda setting they are the issues and this is sort of connected to the goalkeeper function issues that the media does and does not focus on what are they going to set as the agenda Every news media outlet has that. They certainly influence how citizens acquire political information. For example, if there's an issue out in Yemen, the fact that we may or may not be talking about it depends on whether or not the news is covering it and how much is it covering it. Now, certainly there's been a major shift in how we receive our information. Uh, today, if you look at the number of people who are getting their news uh, from television, is 57%. But notice how when you look at the demographics here, uh, it's much higher for older people compared to younger people. Younger people are much more likely to get it online as compared to through television or the traditional means of media. And as you can see here, some of the newspaper decline has been quite significant as a result of the internet. But you'll see that I mentioned here some very important notable news agencies. These are important to know. Uh, the New York Times is a very prestigious, the Associated Press, Reuters, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, among some of the major heavy uh, newspapers that still uh, exist uh, today. And they have been very much an instrumental in their watchdog role as investigative journalism is really going to take a turn uh, when it comes to the Watergate scandal and the Vietnam War, and they're going to be trying to unearth scandals. Certainly, this is nothing new, especially back in the time of the progressive era in the 1900s, but it really ramps up, especially against the presidency after Watergate. And this is going to create more cynicism in the media, the less trust is going to be put into the government. And you see a humongous shift just in about 30 years. When you compare the Kennedy-Nixon coverage, they had, for every four articles um, that were printed, three of those were favorable. Fast forward to the Clinton and Bush, for every five articles, uh, only three are favorable, only two are unfavorable. So you see a, a significant shift towards more negativity in the coverage. And again, this has been much less favorable um, as they're the media is going to certainly be zeroing in on policy statements as well as any controversy that exists. It is important to differentiate between commentary, analysis, and journalism. Some people just certainly tie them all up together. Uh, when we're talking about commentary, that is when the news is giving its own opinion and interpretation instead of just reporting just facts. So when you look at someone like Rachel Maddow or Sean Hannity, that is commentary. When you look at political analysis, this is a form of journalism that provides explanations. Keep in mind, we're not really talking so much about opinions, but explanations on topics by experts typically do not voice their own opinion. And then you have your journalism where they're not providing any real explanation or interpretation or, or any opinion. It's just reporting the facts.
and the facts or the facts or the facts. So it's important not to really say, oh, well, you know, Fox News is so biased. Look at Sean Hannity. Well, he is a commentator. That's his role uh, versus somebody who is a journalist is not supposed to provide any commentary whatsoever. Now, when it comes to election coverage, we've talked about the scorekeeper in the past, but also really a problem with election coverage is that they've been focusing really and have been more emblematic of horse race journalism, where they're focusing on the day to day coverage, overemphasizing the polls as opposed to looking at each candidate's ideas and policies. So they're looking at things that really are arbitrary and not substantive. But the problem with this is something called the bandwagon effect where this constant rep reporting on polling numbers leads to undecided voters favoring the front runner because they trust the wisdom of the masses or want to at least vote for a winner. So it's not really based so much on that person's policies, but hey, how well they're doing. Who wants to support a quote unquote loser who's in the polls? And again, when we talk about with media, uh, image is everything. Consider this fact that 60% of presidential campaign funds are spent on TV ads. So TV still dominating, although the internet is not too far behind. And again, as we've talked about, this very important agenda setting effect um, and certainly how the public evaluates pub uh, political leaders is very influenced by the media. Again, the stories that they cover, uh, the stories that they are going to spend more time on is going to certainly affect people's beliefs. Now, this has led to a rise in narrow casting where you are going to be focusing on specific audiences. So if you think about, for example, CNN, they are uh, very much in, um, with respect to narrow casting, very evident of this. Uh, concept in that they just focus on news and that's all they do. Whereas ABC, right, you have some news, you also have daytime programming, you have, um, you know, the Oscar awards, right? So they're not focusing on a specific audience as much as you might see with Rush Limbaugh or the Young Turks, Fox, MSNBC. And again, keep in mind that, you know, uh, when we have the potential of cable to report news as often as it happens, we're seeing so many more choices for viewer audiences. Back in the day, you only had three major networks and they would not always cover news as again, they had a variety of audience. Now, consumers have a lot of choices um, and sometimes they select the choice that best adheres to their political opinion. Now, of course, there is bias in the media. Keep in mind that traditional mainstream media tends to lean left. Sometimes it's a little bit over-exaggerated, but um, if you look at MSNBC, it tends to be a little bit more liberal. Fox tending to be a little bit more conservative. Here you see an MSNBC uh, graphic here, and then here's a uh, Fox News graphic of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, making it look like she died, even though she um, has not died as of the uh, making of this particular video. But again, increased choices in the media develop specific audiences over time. And again, when you look at bias in cable news uh, coverage of presidential candidates, this one being 12, 2012, uh, you'll see that for CNN, a little bit more towards Romney was negative. With MSNBC, it was a lot more Romney that was negative. But then with Fox, you see a lot more was negative with Obama compared to Romney. So again, you see bias certainly in Now I'm curious as to your opinion on this, uh, is there any validity to the on any validity to this uh, chart. Um, this is where they are going to be asking people four questions about international news, and this is how they scored. Uh, if you were conservative watching MSNBC, you got 0.71 questions correct. If you were a liberal watching Fox News, you got 0.82. Uh, if you were a liberal watching MSNBC, you were you came the closest to being able to answer all of these questions. So again, it is bias infiltrating how we think, uh, what our knowledge is, what they aren't covering. You can certainly say that this might be part of the agenda setting effect uh, where there are certain stories that just aren't covered. Or you might have a more negative view that some are more ideological and that they are misleading their viewers. Who knows? But certainly a major issue has been this notion of fake news um, that has been uh, tweeted about by President Trump as well as other um, people in office. But when you look at the trust in the mass media, you've seen 
major drop-offs, especially amongst Republicans uh, around 2015, you'll see that Democrats tend to have a little bit more trust. But again, even there, that's been declining, especially from 2013. Um, and then independence, a, a little bit of a decline um, overall, especially from its peak back in the day. But overall, that trend of less trust in the media certainly um, has declined regardless of your political affiliation. But one thing that the media certainly does sometimes do is when you look at the perception of crime versus actual crime rate, that there's this over-reporting, especially when it comes to crime. If there's a murder that happens in the middle of nowhere, or Oklahoma, it almost makes you feel more apprehensive that's going to happen in your own neighborhood. But had you not heard about that, you probably would not have had, you know, felt all that worried. If you look at the actual violent crime rate, it has been very, very low um, and has been declining. Uh, yet the level of fear of crime, and again, a lot of this I think can be uh, attributed to the amount of coverage on crime and criminal activity, has spiked. And again, low level of fear, but the amount of crime here. So again, agenda setting effect to a degree. Keep in mind too, with respect to fake news, um, the amount of fake news when it comes to total Facebook engagement for top 20 election stories, look at how fake news is actually eclipsing mainstream news, especially in this very pivotal period between August and election day. So fake news is something that uh, has to be combated, especially in a democracy. And you see, sometimes you see these fake news uh, articles here, but this one looking like it's from ABC News. But if you actually look closely, it's .com.co, even the logo is a little off. Um, so you have to be very, very careful. And if you're not really skilled in that area to differentiate, you're going to take this particular um, headline to be as true when, of course, there's no validity to that. Nevertheless, another phenomenon happening in the media is increased ownership, a lot more private control of the media. Um, if you go into Europe, you see a little bit more national control, but in the United States, you see a lot of uh, more privatization, and you have these chains where you have these massive media conglomerates that account for more than 80% of the nation's daily newspaper circulation, also including broadcast media. I mean, just look at these major, these five major media conglomerates and look at everything that they own. Uh, so you have sort of this idea that, oh, wow, there's so many media outlets. But really, when you look at the specific control of how much that Disney has or Clear Channel has, you'll see that there's really not that much control. It's, it's very much uh, a con conglomerate as is the top five media outlets um, that they have here. In terms of finishing up here, um, when the news is pre uh, presented, especially in narrow casting or uh, when you have a 30-minute news um, time um, available, uh, news ne networks tend to resort to sound bites where these are these very superficial clips that are approximately 10 seconds. You'll notice that the news clip has significantly declined or the soundbite has significantly declined where you only get a snippet shot. And as a result, sometimes it's taken out of context. Sometimes it makes the candidate look bad or better, but you don't have the whole context there. And that's a big problem that people are basing their views off the sound bites when they don't have the whole picture. And again, that comes down to this horse race journalism in the fact that really the media is not focusing on policy enough as much as they're focusing on these little arbitrary clips and superficial stuff. So again, less time is being devoted towards covering these political candidates. And then, of course, with respect to the news, finding the news, uh, oftentimes media networks will assign reporters to beats, uh, which refers to specific locations in which news frequently emanates, such as the Congress or the White House. So they'll have a White House reporter uh, on standby. They'll have somebody who travels with the president. And then also sometimes you have when uh, the president will engage in what's called a trial balloon. And this is an intentional news leak, sort of for assessing what the political reaction is. If this is, you know, happy, they'll go with it. If it's uh, not so, you know, all that nice of a reaction, they might not go on it. But nevertheless, uh, sometimes they do try to seek out what the public opinion will be on uh, with leaking certain things. So that does happen intentionally at times. And again, reporters are going to depend on each other. Uh, sometimes uh, news outlets uh, to report what they're uh, reporting when they can't uh, cover that particular story. So again, there's a lot of uh, work together. And in our last slide here, the FCC is very instrumental in regulating the use of the airways. They prevent monopolies uh, in terms of control of the market, although we know that conglomerates are certainly increasing 
uh, their grip over media outlets. They also review performance of stations. Uh, for example, you're not allowed to curse during you know, prime time hours. Um, and then, of course, they uh, used to actually issue fair treatment rules for politicians, which mandated that airways give alternative viewpoints. That, of course, is an, a, a formal policy. But there you have it. That's the media in a nutshell for a linkage institution.